News team, stay tuned for the CBS Radio Mystery Theater and our next news at 12 midnight. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Waldo Emerson wrote of the shot heard round the world, and that shot was a volley fired by a great ring of embattled American farmers. But scarcely 140 years later, another shot was fired, two to be exact, from a single revolver, and was not only heard round the world, it also changed the world. But I must go to Sarajevo. Why, Franz? Why? Because, my darling Sophie, I said I would. Very well. Just go ahead and say you won't. I cannot do that. But there are rumors of an assassination plot. There are always rumors of an assassination plot. These are more than rumors. My dearest, I shall be surrounded by the army. The army? Can't you understand? It's the army that wants you dead. <laughs> mystery drama, Appointment at Sarajevo, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan, and stars Roberta Maxwell and Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Sunkissed Growers Incorporated. I'll be back shortly with Act One. knows that the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary and his consort, the Princess Sophie, were assassinated at Sarajevo on June 28, 1914. And that's why World War I began. However, we should always look askance at any sentence which contains those two words everyone knows. There is a considerable body of opinion which insists that this royal pair was not assassinated, but executed. Yes deliberately sent to their deaths by some of the highest officials of their own government. And why? Perhaps we might listen to a close friend of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, a man of unquestioned integrity who is not only the Archduke's confidant, but also his personal physician, Dr. Victor Eisenmenger. You must understand one thing. The Archduke Franz Ferdinand was guilty of the worst crime. He had committed the unpardonable sin. He had married the woman he loved. From this root stemmed the great disaster. I was there when it all began, the night he met her in the autumn of the year 1894, at a grand ball given in his honor in the city of Prague. As usual, he didn't want to go. I wish I could tell you how these affairs bore me, Doctor. Your Highness must be aware of his responsibilities. I should be more fit to carry out my responsibilities if I could stay home with a good book, or even a bad one. (laughs) Come, Your Highness, isn't all this fun? The music, the perfume, the beauty by some of the loveliest women in Europe are here tonight. Yeah. Peeking coyly from behind their fluttering fans. And the mamas don't overlook the mamas. Oh, how can I, Your Highness? They descend upon you like bees on the hive. Your Highness is the most exciting bachelor in Europe. When can we decently leave? But we have only just arrived. Doctor, we shouldn't be here at all. Why not? I do not understand you. You tell me I have a serious illness. That's true. Yes. You tell me the only cure is absolute rest. It is. Your illness is in an arrested state, temporarily. At any time it may flare up. Then you shall be compelled to listen. And you will be a difficult patient. So I want you to have a taste of this. Of what? Oh, sociability. Ah, I shall pay my respects to my host, the governor, 
and home I go. But think of the thousands of marks spent on gowns and cosmetics and, and hairdressers. There, there are scores of eligible matches, acceptable alliances for a crown prince, waiting for the slightest smile, the merest glance from your highness. Not all of them are eligible. It would be hard to find one that isn't. I think I found her. Where? There. By the wall. Near the painting of our august emperor. The tall one. You mean the skinny one? Not skinny, slender. It's a matter of taste, your highness. No. She isn't eligible, not at all. How can your highness tell? The gown. It's beautiful. Yes, but not this year's. And uh, the conspicuous lack of jewelry. No, she obviously knows her place. Which is what? Lady in waiting for somebody important. She's a member of a family that has seen better days. And one of her rich relations decided to be nice to her and take her to the ball. Nice. But it's really cruel. She doesn't belong here as an equal, and she knows it. How old would you say she is, Doctor? Oh, she is up there. What's up there? She's at least 25, 26. I'd like to meet her. Find out who she is, and then introduce me. Your Highness, may I present the Countess Sophie Trutek. Countess, may I have this dance? I should be delighted, Your Highness. I'm afraid I don't dance very well. Your Highness is a magnificent dancer. And I'm afraid you're a magnificent flatterer, Countess. <laughs> What else may one say safely to the Archduke's successor? To this particular Archduke's successor, a certain Countess may say anything that she pleases. Then, since I have received absolution in advance, may I ask your Royal Highness why he asked me to die? Because you're the most beautiful woman in the room. Oh, but that isn't true. It's my truth. It was an American, I believe, who said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I'm certain it must have been an American, because it's a sentiment that allows for differences of opinion and can therefore be considered democratic. Are you a Democrat, Countess? How could the Countess Sophie Chutek of Chotkova and Bognan possibly be a Democrat? You haven't answered my question. You haven't answered my question either. <laughs> Which question was this? Why did your royal highness ask me to dance? That's a difficult question. <laughs> Every single person in this room is asking that question. I know. We are the center of all eyes. I see. And now the waltz is ended. But another is about to begin. May I have this one also? But your highness... Perhaps you're tired. I know I am. One dance is usually enough for me. <laughs> Shall we sit outside on the terrace? It's a lovely evening. If everybody was glancing at us before, I'm sure they must be staring now. And I know what they must be saying. Do you? What does he see in her? She's rather tall, ungainly, plain. <laughs> that isn't true. She can't be considered beautiful. I thought we'd settled that business about beauty. I am merely echoing the musings of the multitude. Since I am not eligible, you can have no thoughts of proposing marriage. Since I am not attractive, you surely cannot wish to make me your mistress. I can hardly be considered another Maria Vetter. I I'm sorry, I... I really shouldn't have said that. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It, it was silly, tactless. Yes, but it was human. <laughs> human. You know what that means, Countess. 
to be with someone who is human. To be with a woman who can laugh and talk as if I were just another man. But you are just another man. And you say you are not a Democrat. A true relationship between a man and a woman can only be democratic. Are we going to have a relationship, Sophie? That, your highness, is not for me to say. It isn't? How quickly you abandon your democratic principles. I do not live in a democratic country. I am the Countess Sophie Chutek of Chotkova and Vodman. A most imposing title. But my family has long since fallen from favor. Our house is poor. My sisters married well, but in those days my father was able to dower them decently. What are my prospects, Your Highness? I can live out my life as a poor relation or enter a convent. Are you proposing another alternative? Sophie Chutek, I say we shall get to know each other better. If your royal highness commands it. <laughs> Tell me that you desire this as much as I do. Sophie. Yes. Sophie Chutek. I am in love with you. Do you believe me? Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> All my life I've been waiting for a prince. And now that he's come, why shouldn't I love him? That's where it began. And that's also where most people thought it ended. A few days later, his illness flared up. I took him to the sanitarium in Lolling. She went to live with her sister in Saxony. But they wrote to each other. It seems they wrote every day. My dearest Francie, your letter arrived on a dull gray morning, and suddenly... The sun shone, and the sweet song of the birds rippled through each room. My beloved Sophie, I grow stronger every day. Soon, my darling, soon we shall be together always. But he didn't grow stronger every day. Sometimes he became weaker. Stronger or weaker, I could count on his becoming more difficult. How much longer do you think I can live like this, like an invalid? Mm, I don't know. It's been two years. I wish I could offer your highness a specific date. Do you know what's going on at the Schönbrunn Palace? Well, I would assume the business of the government. The business of destroying me, the Archduke's successor. Every day my enemies keep telling the Emperor, Your Majesty, Franz Ferdinand is a dying man. He hasn't much longer to live. You are the only logical successor. You're the only mature man of experience. Everyone knows it. And besides, isn't there Sophie to think about? Yes. You're right, there is Sophie. You must understand, he was a Habsburg. He truly believed in the divine right of kings, or at least that a king ruled by the order of the Almighty. But even this belief in his divinely inspired mission wouldn't have been enough to make him accept the long, difficult period of medical treatment. He needed Sophie Chutek. The thought of her was good for him. At least as good as any of my medicines. Well, Doctor? I have here the report from the Distinguished Committee of Physicians and Surgeons. Yes? As a result of their thoroughgoing examinations, they agree with your personal physician that your health is absolutely normal. She helped me. Without her inspiration, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have made it. You are really in love with her, aren't you? Can you doubt it? This is the one woman in my life. The only woman 
Well, of course, as you realize, she is ineligible. I know I faced a certain amount of difficulty, but thanks to you, I have the strength. And now I shall go to see her at once. See her? But where? How? You simply Doctor, cannot... we just... have worked out the most clever plan. We shall see each other, and no one will ever suspect. It was a clever plan, but it exploded in their faces. As the good doctor said just before, the Archduke's successor, Franz Ferdinand, was a Habsburg. And, on balance, they weren't really great rulers, but they were far ahead of any other dynasty you can think of when it came to being lovers. And the proof of it is that almost any story about any Habsburg prince is usually a love story. And ours heats up considerably in Act Two. that the First World War was triggered by the assassination of the Archduke Ferdinand of Austria and his wife. And that was all we ever knew about them. And we never cared. Would we have taken more interest if they taught us that Ferdinand and Sophie had one of the greatest love affairs of all time? I think so. But that's what our story is all about. And we're getting it from the Archduke's personal physician, Dr. Victor Eisenmenger. What is this plan of yours, Highness, to see Countess Chutek? She has taken a position with the Archduchess Isabella as a lady-in-waiting. The Archduke Frederick is a good friend. Thus, I have a pretext for visiting the palace in Pressburg. Well, you will only have a chance to see the Countess at brief intervals. There can't be any privacy. Oh, it's enough for us now. I, uh, I do not wish just to have an affair. This is the lady I will marry. So then, ostensibly, Your Highness will go there to visit the Archduke Friedrich and the Archduchess Isabella. Of course. The Archduchess Isabella is one of the world's most unpleasant women. I agree. And she happens to have a daughter, somewhat plump and rather plain, Maria Cristina, but extremely eligible. Hmm. So I understand. Suppose her mother misunderstands and believes that Maria Cristina is the true object of your highness' visits. Franz, you're looking very tired. That's why I came here, Sophie. To hunt, to play tennis. Franz, you don't have to marry me. It's the only way I want you. But they'll never agree to it. I will have to marry you, Sophie. As Archduke's successor, I shall have no choice. What am I to do, marry a woman I don't love and become like the rest of them? Don't worry, there's no one around. Janacek, my faithful servant, Janacek is on guard. All we need is a little time to secure my position, build up some alliances, call in some favors. Yes, my darling. Meanwhile, I look at you every day. That little picture of you... I keep it in my watch cover. And that was their undoing. He had one of those big old-fashioned gold watches where the face was covered and you opened it to see the time. One day he forgot to take it back to Vienna with him when he left. A servant brought it to the Archduchess Isabella. Maria? Maria Christina? Now, where is that? Ah, here you are, my darling, my adorable little dumpling. He left his watch here. Franz Ferdinand did. And you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's someone's picture inside. He's been coming to see you so often. He must be madly, deliriously, hopelessly in love. I'm sure sure he carries your picture. Let's just take the tiniest little peek, shall we? Ah, ah, I see I was right. 
he does have a... Oh, oh, how does she dare? Bring her to me at once. Drag that stumpet down here. How dare you? I take you into my home through the charity of my generous heart. And this is how you repay me. You spoil my daughter's chances of, by having a degrading affair with the Archduke's successor under my very roof. The Emperor will hear of this. And the Emperor did. He was, after all, her cousin. But he had heard similar stories about his son, his brothers, his nephews. He really couldn't take it too seriously. And how are you, friends, Ruth? Fine, Your Majesty, just fine. Good, good. I uh, spoke with the Archduchess Isabella. Tell me, had you formally asked for the hand of their daughter, well, what's her name, Maria Cristina? No, sir. Well, then that should be the end of it. The girl may be eligible, but I tell you, they grow plain enough as they grow older. At least start with someone beautiful. Yes, sir. About the Countess Sophie Chutek. Well, I have no reason to discuss the Countess Chutek. It's your own private affair. I only ask that you behave with discretion. You must come to see me again very soon. Your Majesty... Your Majesty, I request your permission to marry Countess Sophie Chutek. No. Such a marriage is absolutely impossible. I shall never allow it. I... I have given my word to the Countess. I cannot break my word. Let us count the number of wrong things he did. First, he stayed on after the Emperor had dismissed him. Second, he had asked for the impossible to marry a woman who was not eligible by Habsburg standards. Third, after the Emperor had refused permission, he argued about it. Every one of those was an unforgivable offense, and the Emperor never forgot them. Meanwhile, the pressures on Sophie were unbearable. She's staying with my stepmother. The Lord be thanked we seem to have one ally in this world. Everyone strikes out at her, even her own family. Give him up. Do your patriotic duty. It's sickening. It's all so hopeless. The Emperor will never relent. Are you prepared to renounce your rights and become a private citizen? No. Never. I was born a Habsburg. I was born to rule these lands, and let me tell you, without vanity, I'm the only one who's fit. Your Highness, uh, as your friend, I wish you well. As your physician, I cannot help but be alarmed at your mental and emotional state. You are a desperate man. Yes, I know. And I'm ready to take a desperate measure. He will give me his permission. I will force him. Your Highness. I know just what to say to him. Good morning, Francis. Your Majesty. Ah, can we finally have an amicable solution to this little problem? There is one solution that has been suggested to me, and that is simply to wait. When Your Majesty is dead... I can do as I please. Indeed. I intend to live a great many years yet. And every one of those will be a year of lost happiness for me and the woman I love. And so, Your Majesty, I will say this. You will give me your permission to marry. Never. If Your Majesty shall refuse me permission... Yes? What will you do? What can you do? I will commit suicide. What kind of blasphemy? Yes, Your Majesty, I will blow my brains out. How 
dare you. For Sophie Chutek, I dare anything. Everything. Your Majesty's son, Archduke Rudolph, committed suicide. Can this house of Habsburg survive another one? He didn't wait for the interview to be over. He didn't wait to be dismissed. He stormed out. The next move would have to come from the Emperor. And very soon it did. From Prince Montenuvo, the Imperial Chamberlain. Your Highness, the Emperor will give his consent, provided. Yes, yeah. provided. Provided it is to be a morganatic marriage. Morganatic comes from the Gothic morgjan, meaning to restrict. I do not require a lesson in philology, Prince Montenuva. I am aware of what it means. Article 1 of the Habsburg Family Statutes limits membership in the Most High Arch House only to the issue of those marriages that are standisgemas, in accord with status. What you're saying is that my children will not be eligible to inherit the throne. Your children will not be considered legitimate. It's the only way, Sophie. I know. My children, our children, will be barred from the succession. Darling, I will not let you throw away your chance to be a complete emperor. But... Suppose we don't have children. We're not young anymore. I... Well, I don't know what to say. I don't care. I want the happiness we can have now. I think you're going to be very good for me, Sophie. They drove a very hard bargain with him. The hardest part of all was the ceremony of renunciation. I renounce all rights of succession for my children who shall not be deemed members of the Archhouse of the Habsburgs. But the unkindest cut, if I may say so, was saved for last had to do with the wedding itself. Nobody's coming. But I, I don't understand. Nobody's coming to the wedding. Well, my stepmother is and her two daughters, but no one else. Not even my brothers. My darling, only two people and a priest are absolutely necessary for any wedding. This is the finest day of my life. I want you more than anything in the world. Even if it means that our children will not be Habsburgs? Our children will be Habsburgs. I promise you, Sophie. You will be empress, and they will be royal princes and princesses. And one of them will succeed me. I will start today to work slowly, quietly, against this infamous crime. But you signed a document of renunciation. My darling, what has been signed by a prince may be unsigned by an emperor. And that was the day he began to battle to legitimize his wife and children. It was the day that he embarked upon the journey that would end in the violence at Sarajevo. <laughs> Important to our story is Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria, who reigned for an unbelievable total of 68 years. He had many lovable qualities. If he seemed a little put out with his nephew's insistence on marrying for love, it was because old Franz Joseph sincerely believed that marriage was for policy and mistresses were for romance. I shall return with more of this family drama shortly. The Habsburg family was jinxed, or should we say cursed. Things really went badly for old Franz Joseph. His brother Maximilian tried to become king of Mexico and was executed. 
His son, Rudolph, committed suicide. His wife, Elizabeth, was assassinated by a terrorist, and his nephew, Franz Ferdinand, will be murdered at Sarajevo. Dr. Victor Eisenmenger continues the story. They were married in 1900. They died in 1914. They had 14 beautiful years. It was a marriage of love. They were blessed with lovely children. If they were ordinary citizens, they would have owned the world, even if they had nothing. But he was a Habsburg, and he was ambitious, and everyone knew it, especially his arch enemy, Prince Montenuvo. It is my painful duty, Your Majesty, to raise a most delicate issue. Mm, I assume this will concern the Archduke's successor. Unfortunately, Your Majesty, we know he is plotting to nullify the renunciation. You have evidence, Prince Montenuvo. The Magyars do not recognize his renunciation. The newspapers in Hungary are almost unanimous. Uh, this is the gist of what they say. The wife of the Emperor is the Empress. The son of the emperor is the crown prince. But I'm aware of this. And may I suggest, your majesty, that these newspapers be suppressed? They deserve to be. I agree. But it will only serve to dramatize and popularize their position. Where is the evidence that the archduke's successor plans to renounce? Uh, Your Majesty, since the Magyar minority is strong and turbulent, doesn't it make sense that the Archduke's successor is going to use this as a base for future planning? Of course. Your Majesty, we must do something. Thank you, Prince. I, I will take the matter under consideration. <laughs> Are you happy, my darling? Yes. Oh, Francie, I only wish that you could be as happy as I am. Why? What makes you think I'm not? We have never lied to each other. And you know very well how the legal status of our marriage... Not another word. You see, my precious, when I become upset... Oh, yes, you know it very well. How upsetting it's been for me. I do not sit and sulk. I plan. I do something. Ask me what I've done just now. Oh, Francis. I have been invited to visit the English royal family. I refused. But King Edward was always your good friend. I said, I do not travel without my wife. And they replied that they had arranged excellent quarters for you at a hotel. <laughs> then I stated, I do not spend the night without my wife. Franz, there are certain things you... And they said, diplomatically, of course, that they understood that there were certain restrictions placed upon you. I didn't let them finish. I said, since when are arrangements made among Habsburgs binding upon the royal house of Great Britain? You did You shall be received at an audience with King Edward and Queen Alexandra. Your escort will be me. France! Mm -hmm. And this is to be the first of many. I represent the future of the empire. Franz Joseph will soon be dead, and the past shall be buried with him, and this is the first of many triumphs for you, my darling. You will be received by the Kaiser, by the Tsar, by everyone. Francie, do you know what time it is? Two in the morning. So late? You've worked long enough. Come to bed. Spoken like a true wife. And soon you shall truly be my wife. I've always been your wife. I'm not concerned with some words on paper. Now you need your rest. Oh, just a few minutes more. I'm, I'm almost finished. What is it? This is going to be nothing more or less than the foreign policy of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And do you know what its basic premise is to be? Of course. An alliance with Russia. Naturally. Russia, Germany, 
Austria. We are the three empires. We hold the lever against the forces of divine law and order. The general staff is not going to like it. Hmm, I know. The general staff wants a war with Russia. Do you know why? Because Russia encourages unrest among the Slavic minority peoples in our empire. Well, that's just the excuse. They want a war with Russia because they believe that Russia is the one country they can defeat. France? Who else can they make? Germany? France? Italy? England won't permit it. Russia, that's an opportunity for glory. I cannot believe that men can be so... Oh, so cynical. I know. You cannot believe the unbridled vanity of these toy soldiers, but we couldn't defeat anyone. Not with the army we have now. We need peace to create a war machine that's in tune with the 20th century. Yes. It was his position on Russia, finally, that did it. Russia cost him the favor of the army, the very army he commanded. The idea that he favored an alliance with Russia could not be swallowed. And so, in May of 1914... The army made a move. Uh, That is to say, certain officers did. Darling, you shall have to do without me for the last two weeks in June. You mean you're going somewhere without me? Oh, you would be bored to death. Where are you going? On maneuvers. Go with my blessing. (laughs) I am the commander-in-chief, you know. And a very good one, too. So I'm going to inspect the army of the east. The Army of the East? Yes. The staff wants me to review the Army Corps now stationed in Bosnia. Bosnia? Oh, no. Darling, what is it? Bosnia. That's the territory we just occupied. It's dangerous. Well? It's filled with all kinds of revolutionists, anarchists, terrorists. I know. And you're going? It's on the border of Serbia. There are groups of Serbian anarchists who swear they will kill every Habsburg. Darling, I accepted the invitation. Why? Sophie, is this to be our first quarrel? Yes. Because this is the first time I have ever seen you commit an irrational action. Well. It may be foolhardy, I suppose. But it was the way Potiorek proffered the invitation. Potiorek? Yes, dear. General Potiorek. The one you turned down twice for chief of... I felt I had to accept. Well, you can just go ahead and then... and unaccept. Sophie, there's my honor. Are you going to talk like one of those toy soldiers who you have so much contempt for? There's the future of your country and the future of your family. I'm going with you. I will not permit it. I will go with you. Choose. Do you want me to be at your side? Or would you rather I trailed along at the end of the train? Like a camp follower. Sophie, what am I going to do with you? Your Highness, I cannot remain silent. I must speak. Doctor, we are good friends. You have always felt free to say what was on your mind. You'll tell me not to go to Sarajevo. Have you read the Serbian newspapers? Here, here, look, look, look. The Austrian successor will visit Sarajevo. Serbs, pick up rifles, revolvers, bombs, knives, pitchforks. Arm yourselves. Take holy vengeance. There's always violence smoldering in Serbia. I know for a fact that the palace has received notice that you are to be a target for assassination. I've heard that rumor. They want you to go ahead. Stick your hand in the beehive and be stung. They won't have to lift a finger. It will be done for them. Nature, as the emperor likes to say, will take its course. I appreciate your advice, my dear friend. But you will not take it. I cannot take it. Ah. What's the matter with all you Habsburg princes? Do you all have a death urge? Yes, you all do. Except that stupid, senile, ponderous old man on the throne. He is going to live forever. (laughs) 
I was wrong about that. Emperor Franz Josef died two years later. But that isn't part of my story. Franz Ferdinand went to Sarajevo with Sophie. And as his personal physician, I went along with the party. It was Sunday, the 28th of June. By a coincidence, the 14th anniversary of his signing of the renunciation. They were driving to the cathedral for a welcoming service. The streets were lined with sullen, silent people. Then I saw it. A black object hurtling through the air. Look out! Sophie! Sophie! What is it? A bomb! Sophie! You're all right. And you? Your Highness! We're fine. Is anyone hurt? A young staff officer just up ahead, but oh, just slightly. I, I, I will tend to him. They caught the man. Yes. And if I know the Austrian government, they'll probably give him a medal. I breathed easier, but I knew I shouldn't have. The attack had miscarried, but the streets were filled with violent young people. We arrived at the cathedral, and the mayor, a stupid man, gave the standard welcome as if nothing had happened. Happiness fills every soul in this capital city. The entire population greets the most high visit of your royal highness with joy and delight. What good are your speeches, Mr. Mayor? I come to visit Sarajevo and they throw bombs at me and my wife. It's an outrage. May I suggest we cancel the rest of the visit. You always give good advice, Doctor. Yes, we will. I want to visit the hospital to shake hands with that young officer, and then we shall take the train back home. Oh, Franz, wonderful. And we'll change the route back to the hotel. I still think we may meet some bullets out there today. And they did. But the driver was confused. He turned left instead of right or whatever he was supposed to do. They shouted for him to reverse directions. For a moment the car stood still. And a young man named Gavrilo Princip had a perfect target. He fired twice at a distance of five feet. I ran to the car. He was holding her in his arms. Don't die. Live. Live for the children. Stay alive. For our children. Your Highness. Your Highness. Are you in pain? It's nothing. Nothing. But it was everything. He was dead. And so was she. And their world. And my world. And everybody's world. Died with them. Yes, a world died. And another world was born. The world we live in today. A world born out of the agony and chaos of the First World War. A world that still has more than enough agony and chaos of its own. But it also has hope. I'll be back shortly. Our fate, it seems is always being decided in obscure places with strange names. Sarajevo, that was the name of the city. Bosnia, Herzegovina, that was the name of the country. Ask people on the street, what do you know about Bosnia, Herzegovina? You know you'll get some blank stares. Today, it's part of Yugoslavia. And the world goes on. And who even thinks about Franz Ferdinand and Sophie Tutek? and their appointment at Sarajevo. 
Our cast included Tony Roberts, Roberta Maxwell, Court Benson, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sunkist Growers Incorporated and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Better with skis in one end, we'll strap you in and I'll guard you down the mountain.